Pocketbook devices have been around for a long time, over 10 years actually. They've had stores in New York and California and all over the place. Here is their home screen. You can swipe the little carousel here. It's got three kind of segments. And then anything new that you load in will be down here. And it does have inertia, meaning that if you swipe it, it slowly keeps going until it slows down. So that's kind of cool. You do have the uh, side loaded content available as well. You see we put the PDF we always uh, use in there. You can tap the top, kind of swipe that down a little bit takes a second. Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, front light, task manager, and sync. Sync will sync all of your stuff, so whether you have stuff in the cloud, uh, new updates, new content, etc., that's what you'll find it there. And some stuff right here, notifications, you can clear, clear all. And the smart light we will go over a little bit later. So I accidentally clicked on that. You do have the ability to have some apps too. Now this isn't apps in the sense where you can download APK files, Google Play, all that kind of stuff. It's basically just whatever's here. Uh, Cloud, Sudoku, Scribble, Klondike, Chess, uh, audiobooks, stuff like that. And there is a dongle that is included with this if you've seen our unboxing video that uh, actually comes with the device and you can plug it in and get some audio features as well. So we're just going to go ahead and look at a book now. Pocketbook continues to surprise people with their designs and whatnot. Now, they're doing something very different that basically no other device does, is that they allow you to do... Uh, if you long press on something, like so, you can actually scribble right here, draw notes directly in the book. And there aren't many manufacturers that will allow you to do this on EPUB and and different file formats of books. Uh, people allow you to do this on PDFs and stuff like that, like the Onyx Books Note, they allow you to scribble inside the book and stuff. This is just a regular EPUB book and we're able to scribble on the screen, which um, is actually a very nice feature because you don't ever see that and it is something cool that they brought to the table. You can of course change the settings. You can go page, margin, uh, line spacing, default, font styles, deja vu, roboto, and you can fit to corners. Um, you can also uh, choose the pages, status bar, built-in page numbering if you want some elements on the screen and whatnot. You do have the ability to long press and get a couple more options up top here. You can highlight, take notes. We'll just take a look at the keyboard really quick here. Keyboard is an unconventional QWERTY keyboard, very Kobo-esque with its stacked characters. It is a little bit slow, but it doesn't miss any characters, so that is also nice. And if we continue to long press, you have dictionary lookup. Taste, very nice. And you have, it actually opens read rate, so you can sign in with Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of uh, Bookland, um, Obnokal sneaky, and then you can log into read rate. It's kind of like uh, if uh, Amazon had Goodreads, uh, Pocketbook would have read rates. So there is actually a very decent reading experience when it comes to the Pocketbook, and surprisingly it is quite customizable when it comes to notes, annotations, highlights, and even making physical notes on the screen, which could really break down a lot of barriers because you don't always have to have a PDF or a note taking device for that matter. The PDF experience on this device hasn't really been prioritized for them. It is okay, but it's not the greatest. It's a little bit sloppy and uh, a little bit slow. However, a positive thing about this is that a lot of the features from the ebook experience carry over into this. You still can do highlights, you can still do long press, which a lot of huge companies can't even figure out uh, how to do in PDFs. You can highlight with the little anchors there. Uh, you can still scribble on the screen, make notes, uh, search in Google, 
a dictionary lookup and a whole bunch more. So that's actually very nice that they give you those choices. Physical page turn buttons work in both uh, ebooks and PDFs. The long press quick nav, I guess you could call it, is a little bit strange. It doesn't have the manga model, Amazon slider, doesn't have the A2 mode, uh, um, Kobo navigation. Actually, right down here in the corner, you'll see it start to count by tens. 20, 30, 40, and then you let go and it takes a second and then it gets to that page. So it's kind of strange. Um, it's not the best system. You don't really know where you are in the book except for the amount of pages it's skipping. Um, and you can't control anything else but the tens. But that is okay because the PDF experience is as customizable as the ebook experience. You even have pinch and zoom. So you can pinch and zoom in and out. Once you let go, it takes a second to render. And then you're back to full uh, uh, quality. So it turns it into that kind of A2 mode while it's moving so it can navigate a little bit more smoothly and then it turns to the full screen, um, the full resolution after the fact. Bookland is their store, so you can go to there, sign into Wi-Fi. You don't necessarily need to sign into Bookland right out of the gates. Um, because Pocketbook is a very international company, you are going to have to siphon through a lot of content that uh, isn't English sometimes. Um, and the prices can be a little bit squirrely. For example, some books can be $55 USD and some books will be $222, $893. They're all based off of international currencies, which is why they uh, organize themselves into these weird prices after conversion. You can categorize your book discovery. So if you click Polsky, for example, it's going to load for a second and then Polsky books start to show up. So that is really cool that they give you that international feel without you being... Um, bothered to kind of look through everything without some sort of organized system because they do have you covered with both categories uh, and the language down on the right there. I don't know if this was intentional in this world of note-taking e-readers um, but I hope it was. They have scribble down here and Yes, you can use your finger to scribble because that's what naturally you're going to have with you when you have this device. If you happen to have note-taking styluses from Onyx or Boyu or something, they will not work because this doesn't have a Wacom layer. It's simply a capacitive layer. It doesn't have that extra Wacom layer so the pen will know what to do. However, if you have any of these lying around, pens that are capacitive based stylus pens. For example, if you had a smartphone, you can write with the stylus pens or your finger because this is basically just mimicking your fingertip. And that actually works on these, which is kind of cool because it turns this device into a faux note-taking device. And you know, they make some pretty cool styli or styluses for capacitive note-taking. For example, they have this soft touch one right here and actually, they have these ones too, which have a little pad that moves around and you're able to make notes like that. They do have some decent options too. Thick line, uh, they have eraser function, so you can erase. They have input text, so you can actually input your text like that, make text boxes, create new page. Surprisingly very robust for an e-reader that has nothing to do with it actually being a note-taking device. Your eyes are not deceiving you, it is kind of blue, but that's okay because they have their smart light, which they call it. And as you slide, it changes to stone gray all the way to this super orange candle light. So the distribution is really good and the functionality be to change between uh, blue LEDs and orange LEDs is fantastic. This is gonna be really hard to come off on camera, but actually it's one of the better ones where you can actually see them. You can see the LEDs here and you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blue LEDs, and if we slide that to the orange, you can then count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine orange LEDs. So they actually have prioritized the orange LEDs over the blue in this device. The orange is very nice. You can see here it projects fairly well. I mean, uh, it's not exactly 
something you want in an e-reader for it to project a lot you're supposed to light the screen not the room this one does have a fair distance of light distribution so you can just turn that down and there you go you have a perfect uh, amount of light intensity with the perfect color balance the pocketbook ink pad 3 pro has a lot of pros and it has a lot of cons it is a little bit slower and the features to load them up takes a bit of time. It's also not the quickest device when navigating between applications, like you go to the notes, you go back to the book, you go to the PDF, but it has a bunch of pros. It has customizable features in pretty much everything you do, whether it comes to an ebook, a PDF, uh, or even note taking, which is very rare to see an actual e-reader that doesn't have a Wacom layer to really embrace note taking as well as they do. So this device, it has a really good track record. They've been around for a long time. It's got a lot of screen real estate. It's not going to break the bank and it has a lot of features going for it for something that isn't running Android. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, let us know. And for a full review of the Pocketbook InkPad 3 Pro, this is Peter.